Today we're going to be learning how to synchronize and manage your translations using the crowding GitHub action. So this is going to save us manually uploading and downloading files from our computer. And instead, we're going to leave it all up to our CI server, in this case, GitHub to handle all that automatically. So yeah, let's get right into it. So the best place to get started is the GitHub crowding action repository right here. So you can see it tells you a bit about what this uh, GitHub action does, so it uploads, downloads, translations, creates PRs. We'll look into that later on. And then there's some basic usage, which we're pretty much going to copy, modify a tiny bit uh, and take it on from there. The most important part here probably is these three links at the top. So I'm just going to open these up. So the examples here is obviously just going to show you different scenarios and different example usage examples that you can do with the GitHub action. We're definitely going to be using this later on. The second link there showed a configuration file. So the GitHub action here uses the crowd and CLI under the hood. And we've got a video on that if you want to check that out. The configuration file basically just tells Crowdin how to manage your repository. And then the final thing is the wiki here. So if you have any kind of questions about the GitHub action itself, the wiki is going to be your kind of one stop shop for that. Cool. So I'll close these down. And next up, let's just go ahead and build our own integration and see how this works. To help us do that, I'm just going to head over to Lingui.js. And this is just a framework for translations um, in JavaScript. And we're just going to go into the examples directory here. They have a few examples. I'm going to click on the create React app example. So this is just a kind of a, a little playground app that demos some of the translation features. We're not actually worried about the app itself. We just want something that's set up that already has translations so that we can add the integration here. And it's definitely worth noting that I'm using React here just for this example, but this will work for different frameworks uh, and different setups as well. So what I've done is I've taken this create React app and I've uh, cloned it locally, just this specific directory. And I've also just pushed that up to a, a new GitHub repo. And we don't need to go into too much details, but all this app does is it's got the English and Czech translations. And as you click on either one, it's obviously going to show the translations. And I'll just quickly show you where the translations are kept. So inside the repository here, if you go to source locales, we can see two directories. And these are the two letter codes. So English here and Czech. And these messages.po are the ones that hold our translations. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this a bit. And I'm actually just going to initialize the project as I would any crowd in project using the crowd in CLI. So I'm going to go crowd in init uh, within the root directory of my project. It's going to ask me to authorize using the browser. So I'm just going to hit yes there. So I'm going to go ahead and pop in my password and log in. And now I'm authenticated. I'm going to go back over here. It's going to ask me for the project ID. So I don't actually have a project that's configured yet. So I'm going to go to crowd in profile there and I'm going to configure a new project and then we'll take the ID and pop it in. So I'm just going to go create a project here. I'm going to call this Lingui crowd in demo, same as my repository. I'll scroll down. I know I have the check, um, it's CZ. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new translation. So we've got the Czech translations. I'm going to add the French. I'm keeping the source as English. And then we're just going to hit create project. So once you've got your project created, um, if you just look for this ID here, and I'm just going to copy and paste that into my project ID. There we go. So I'm just going to go basically through all the defaults. Project directory is the base. And I think that should be it. So what this done is it's created this crowd in YAML file in, in the root directory. I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up again. This is all in the crowd in CLI video if you want to check out more details about this. So I've updated my crowd in YAML. Now a few things to note here is instead of just using the direct project ID and API token, I'm using the underscore env suffix at any here so that I can use a environment variable. So these are the two names of the environment variables. We're going to set this up on GitHub later on. And the only other thing here is I've added in the source translation, which is my English messages PO, and I've added in all my other translations, which is just going to be the, the two letter codes. Great. So I think it's time now to add our GitHub actions. But just before we do that, let's just have a think about how we're going to do this. So what I want the workflow to be is anytime I update any of my translations or my sources, I want to make sure that when I commit that code or when I push it up, it's going to be updating the crowd in project. And at the same time, I of course want any translated strings in the project to be downloaded to my local directory, maybe on a cron schedule, maybe when I pull it manually. So we're essentially going to do that. We're going to create two GitHub actions, one that's going to upload automatically anytime we make changes and one that's going to download in our case for this demo, just download it every time we um, run the, the job manually. So let's see how that looks. I'm going to head over to the crowd in documentation because I don't want to be writing this out from scratch. And I'm just going to go over to the examples here. We can scroll down and we can just see, hey, we've got an upload sources only. That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to take this and copy it in. So that looks good so far. So I'm just going to add one additional thing. I'm going to add a paths uh, array here. So I don't want this to be run every time anything is changing. I only want it to be run when something in my locales changes. Let's just walk through this. So this is only going to happen on the main branch. That's absolutely fine. We have a job called Crowdin. Uh, let's call this Crowdin upload instead. It's going to run on Ubuntu. That's absolutely fine. And then the steps, it's going to check out the repository and then it's going to run the actual GitHub crowd in action here with the following options. So it's going to upload the sources. That's what we want. It's going to upload the translations false here. So I'm just going to update this to true. I'm just going to assume I want to upload the translations as well if I have them. 
and then we're just setting false to download the translation. So for this GitHub Actions, we don't want to download anything. We'll do that in the separate GitHub Action. And then we have uh, a couple of environment variables. These are the ones that um, are going to be passed into the crowd in YAML file here. So what we're going to do is before we do anything here, we're going to upload these environment variables into our GitHub configuration. So if you head over to your project and you go into settings and down here into secrets and variables and then hit into actions, we can create new repository secrets here. So I'm just going to enter those two in and be back with you in a second. So I've just added those in. And just one thing in case I forgot to mention, the personal token here was generated automatically when I ran the crowdin init command. So I just copied and pasted that over here. And if you don't have one, you can just create it in the crowdin portal itself. Perfect. So I think that's everything for uploading. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to do a download workflow. So again, this one's going to be slightly different. Instead of on push, we are going to do something called workflow dispatch. So I'm going to do workflow dispatch here. All this means is that on GitHub, it's not going to run automatically. It's going to run when I click a button. I'm going to head over back to the examples page and I'm going to just look for a new PR. I'm just going to copy this and paste it right over here. So this is going to be slightly different. Most of it is the same up here. The only difference here is I don't want to upload any sources. So I'm going to set false for these two. They don't want to upload any translations either. I do want to download the translations this time. And there's a few kind of options to configure that. So branch name, obviously we want to create the pull request, the, the title body for the pull request and where it's going. The final thing to mention here is that we do need to have a secrets.github token here. So you can create your GitHub um, by yourself, but you can also use an automatic one that GitHub provides. So that's what I'm going to stick with. GitHub already provide a token that is attached to every run and it's under this name, GitHub token. The only one thing we need to do is just give it permissions to create pull requests because it doesn't have that by default. So to do that, I'm going to head over to our GitHub repository, back into settings, actions, and general. Then I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and I'm just going to make sure to check this button over here and hit save. Great. So next up, what we're going to do is we're going to push up the changes and make sure everything's working all right on GitHub. So I've just pushed the second commit here and we can see the two GitHub actions here, but it hasn't been triggered. And that's of course, because in our upload workflow, we said we only want to trigger this if we actually make changes to the locales in the latest commit. I didn't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump back into the English file here. I'm just going to change this and I'm just going to remove the... Um, yeah, the colon here, it doesn't really matter what change, remove some text, and I'm just gonna commit this again, and I'm just gonna push it up, and then we'll hopefully see it a bit better this time. So that's it pushed, I'm gonna jump back into GitHub, and straight away we can see the action is now running. So I'm just gonna click into this action, I'm just gonna give it a moment to finish off running, and we can see that this job has succeeded in 24 seconds, so we can kind of look at the logs here, we can see that it uploaded the uh, the sources here, we can see that uploaded the, in this case, the Czech translations, because we don't, of course, have the, the French, and now if we head back over to our Lingui, project, we refresh this, we should be able to see that the check translations have gone to 100%. And if we head over to sources, we should be able to see the strings coming in from our English locales. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to see. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back over to the French translation here. And I'm just going to update a couple of the pieces of text. And it doesn't really matter what I put in here. So I'm just going to do another test and some text here. So I'm just going to save that. And I guess I will save the first one and just save anyways, head back over here. And I think that should be that. So final step here, we're going to go into our GitHub repository. We're going to head over to the actions. We're going to go to our initial action, the one with the workflow dispatch. I should probably give these better names. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this manually. So I'm just going to run the workflow. And we can see that the action here has failed. So I'm going to click into this just to see what happened. Uh, I'm going to go into the jobs, look at the logs. Uh, and very quickly, we can see that there's a permission issue. And I actually recognize exactly what, what's wrong here. So I did forget one step. So as I said earlier on, the GitHub action gives you the GitHub token with kind of some default permissions, but you do need to override those permissions. So I think initially it only has read-only permissions. So what we want to do is we want to do permissions. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it, I think, write all permissions. So of course, in your case, you might want to add a bit more granular uh, permissions, but this is going to be fine for this demo case. So I'm going to say add write permissions. Then I'm going to commit this and I'm going to push it up again. And let's head over to GitHub and run this action one more time. So I'm going to go back into the run workflow and run this again. And there we go. That seemed to fix it. So now if I head over to the pull requests, what we should basically see is a new pull request that's been created by the GitHub action bot. We can click into this and we should see a few changes. So let's head over to the files changed. So what's done here is, I guess it's updated the check data here. I guess this is just the metadata. And we can see that it's added the French translations here. You can see that it's uploaded the entire file. Most of the strings are gonna be empty because we've not translated them, but the few strings that we have translated are gonna appear here. So now we can kind of merge this in. 
pull it into our local repository and just kind of continue on with that flow. And there you have it. We've successfully added a GitHub crowding integration into our repository. And this is just the flow that I've decided to show you because it's quite a simple one. But this, of course, will you know change depending on how you work. So just check out the examples, check out the documentation and see what best fits you. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below or you can contact the crowding technical support team, which are available 24-7. And I'm going to wrap it up there. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.